Hello again, tuba players. This is Mr. Kruger with a lesson on etude number two. Okay, so let's begin with observing the key signature. That's the first thing you should look at when you're learning a new piece of music. Um, we've got one flat, okay? And so if you know the order of the flats, um, when you have one flat, the first flat is B flat. So the only note that's going to be flat, unless it's marked otherwise, is going to be B. So over here, we've got B flat, right? But that's A natural next to it. And right here, your good old friend E, you know, a lot of people like to play E flat most of the time, but this is E natural. So you're going to finger that second vowel. Oops, I made a little mark on this. All right. Okay. So. Um, make sure you're, you're careful about that with the key signature. I also want to point out a danger spot with the accidentals. Look at measure 11 over here. You'll see I have a mark. I've marked it already, but there's a rule. When we have a flat here on this A flat, that means all of the A's that are after this A are also, that, that flat's going to carry to them. Okay? And until we have a bar line, and there's our bar line, right? Okay, so this is before the bar line, and so that's an A flat. So I went ahead and drew a little flat underneath it as a friendly reminder so that I never miss that A flat, okay? And I would uh, advise you to go ahead and mark that A flat. That's a really smart idea. Okay, so that's most of the key signature stuff. I mean, you know, get all you, there's a lot of E naturals, so you got to be careful about that. The rhythms are the next thing that I want to draw to your attention and to teach you about. Okay, most of these rhythms are pretty basic, um, with the exception of really maybe two different kinds of rhythms. Okay, the first is easier. I'm going to point out uh, how to count. Look at measure nine here. All right, we know how to count usually quarter notes and eighth notes after your first beginner year. You know, so we we count this as one full beat on beat one, and and over here, if we started on beat three, we count three and four and, so we, we know how to count those eighth notes. But this, you may not have seen, especially if you're a seventh grader, okay, these are sixteenth notes, all right? And at Westbrook, when we count sixteenth notes, we count them one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, all right? And so since we have a quarter note on beat one, these 16th notes begin on beat two, because that takes all of beat one, the quarter note does. So we begin on beat two, and if we counted this measure, we would count it one, two e and a three and four n. You see how that works? I would advise going slower though, because 16th notes happen so fast. So maybe one, two e and a three and four n. One, you see how that works? Make yourself go slow. The quarter notes will feel really easy, but it'll help you get the rhythm right with those 16th notes. Also, I want to point out that this F right here, you got to tongue that F, but you just slurred everything else. So if I were singing that to, 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 okay, I didn't sing the right notes, but the articulation's right there. To, 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 all right? That's how it'll sound. And so you got to make sure you tongue in the right place with those slurs, okay? I've marked a couple breaths in this piece. Those are places where I'm uh, planning on, on breathing when I play it and when I teach this piece, I'll probably have my students breathe in those places. Um, on the bottom line, there's a lot of options for breaths and you'll kind of have to choose those as, uh, as you're able to, kind of based on your ability level and where, where you're able to fit the breath in and what sounds best to you. Okay, so um, let's see. Okay, so the other trickier rhythm, if we just look at measure one, we see it. Okay, we've got this quarter note, easy, and we've got quarter notes at the end, but this thing in the middle that's beamed together, that's called a dotted 8 16th, right? Okay, now this rhythm may not be familiar to you, and I wanna just review or teach, if you've never seen it before, some basics about how to understand this rhythm and how to count it. Okay, so we hopefully you've seen a dotted note before. Okay, um, what a dot does, if I move over here, a dot, there it is, if it'll focus, it adds half of the note's value, right? Okay, and so, you know, like you, you can see right here, I've got a half note drawn. A half note usually gets two beats, right? And so 
if we have a dotted half notes, we have you would have those two beats, but then you would add half of, of two beats, which is one beat, right? Okay, and so that would give you three beats for your dotted half note. Pretty simple, right? So we, we're going to use that same logic on the eighth note. It's a little bit trickier. Hopefully uh, your math teacher has taught you well. All right, so um, we've got the eighth note in 4-4 four, four time. This is all 4-4 four, four time, right? So that's why the half note gets two beats. The eighth note is going to get one half of a beat, right, in 4-4 four, four time. All right, so um, if, I, if I put a dot next to my eighth note, let's see here. There we go. It's kind of sloppy, but dotted eighth note, all right? We're going to take our one half, and then we're going to have to add um, half of one half. Okay, well, I'm just going to give you the answer to what one half of one half is. Um, it's one fourth. Okay, so we have to add one half and one fourth, and in order to do that, um, you're going to need a common denominator. Okay, so one half is the same thing as two fourths. If you add two fourths and one fourth, you get three fourths. That is how long a dotted eighth note is. It's three fourths of a beat. And we count fourths of a beat, we count them, uh, those are sixteenth notes. So I just, you know, reviewed how to count sixteenth notes, one e enda, two e enda. Okay, well, a dotted eighth note, if it started on beat one, it would last for one e and. That's how long it would last. Okay, and, and then the uh would not be included in that note. Okay, so if we look down here, back at the music, We've got a quarter note on beat one. I'll draw the counts above because of the forte dynamic marking. Quarter note on beat one, that takes all of beat one, so then the dotted eighth starts on beat two. All right, so it goes, that dotted eighth is gonna last for two E and, right? Two E and. That's how long it is. I'm gonna group all of that together. One, two E and. And then what we have after that dotted eighth note, we have a sixteenth note, that is on a, uh, some people call it duh, depending on how you want to count. So we have one, and then this is two e and, and that's uh. And then these quarter notes are on beat three and beat four. So if I were counting it, I would, I would count one, two, a three, four. You see how that works? Or, or if you were going to subdivide, you'd think one, two e and duh, three. One, two e and duh, three, four. Da, 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 da. You see how that works? All right, and, and so you've got these dotted eight sixteenths sprinkled all throughout this piece, but they're all gonna be counted in that same way. So like measure two will be one and two, a three, four. Measure three, one, two, a three, four, and one, two, a three, and so forth. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good start on how to uh, figure this piece out. Best of luck.